Are you interested in learning about charts and graphs in Excel? I'm posting a 12-part series to teach you all the basics. Here's a list of the topics. And in this video, we're covering the chart design ribbon. So let's look at some options that we have in designing charts within Excel. We have the same basic formula as we were looking at before, and we will hit Control Q and just use this first option right here. Whenever you click onto a chart, two new tabs appear on the ribbon. You can see here the first is the chart design tab and the second is a formatting tab. So we'll stick with the chart design tab and go through all the options that we have on this tab of the ribbon. On this far left section you have chart elements that you can add or change in the in the chart. First you have the axes so you can choose to get rid of or highlight the horizontal or vertical axes. So if we uncheck this, the axis goes away. Same thing here. Obviously this doesn't really tell us a whole lot, so we would want to keep those on. And you'll notice that in a lot of these, there's these more options right here. If you click onto that, what that will do is it will bring up a, a section over here on the right hand of the screen where you can add all, where you can change all sorts of features and, and formatting. There's a lot to these sidebars that uh, we won't be able to cover in, in this section, but just know that they're there. And if you want to do something that you can't immediately see, you will likely just need to click on that, the more options. Next, we have the access titles. So by default, Excel will not provide access titles but you can add those pretty simply by just selecting those. And if you double click, we would do revenue. And then here we would double click and type quarter. Again, with this basic information, access titles probably aren't super helpful, but that's how you would add them if you had a more complex graph. A chart title, you can see it defaults to create one and have it above the chart. You can also have it centered and overlaying the data itself or check this box to have no title at all. We'll get rid of the title there. Data labels are labels with data. So what this will do is it will add these little data labels that show the value that the graph is showing. So this will add these outside end labels right here. And what this is showing is in Q1, you had a value of 50, in Q2, it was 60, Q3, 75, and then Q4, 100. So it allows you to show the actual number of the graph. So you can see visually what the numbers are, but then also see with a little bit more precision. As you could see, there are lots of options for how those data labels look. Data labels are one of those things that clicking this more data label options and then kick and then clicking through some of these options right here are is probably the most helpful thing to do. Next, we have a data table. I don't use these very often, uh, but if you had maybe some more complex data or some data that that you felt was important to show the actual numbers with a graph. You can see that this, what this does is it just puts a little table at the bottom with the numbers as well. Error bars aren't really applicable to this graph and, and are a little bit more advanced for advanced statistical graphs. Grid lines here, you can choose what kind of grid lines you want to put. This is just a, a pretty minor thing there and then a legend our graph right here only has revenue that we're graphing but if you were graphing something like net income or number of orders or something like that you could choose to have a legend for what each bar looks like and then you can see you can put it a number of different places within your graph um, if you have a lines graph, then this lines option will show up that you can that you can change. 
A trend line is pretty self-explanatory. It will add a trend line to your data. So it will kind of look at your data and say, this is the trend that we are seeing in the data itself. And you can pick whichever trend line makes the most sense for your data. And then finally, we have this up down bars. Again, this is for more advanced graphs that we won't go over. This quick layout section is some preloaded templates that Excel comes with, some layout options that basically just take some of the options that we were looking at before and just apply it quickly to your graph. So if you find a layout, a quick layout that you like or that works really well for your graph, this would be a great way to just quickly get the layout that you like. This next button shows you the change colors options. So it's going to default to whatever your default color palette is. This will largely depend on what version of Excel you're using, but you can pick a different preloaded color palette. Uh, you can do monochromatic. This graph is simple and doesn't have multiple bars, but if it did, you know, if you were graphing revenue and gross profit or net income, that sort of a thing, you could pick uh, what you want your, your color scheme to look like. And then here you have some chart styles. So this is a little different than the chart layout because this is just applying more like style formatting to your graph. So it's not going to actually change some of the settings that we were looking at, like the data labels or the data table that we've added, but it, it just changes some of the appearance. We'll pick, we'll pick this one because it, it looks pretty cool. The switch row or column button uh, is not super helpful for our graph right now, but we'll, I will go over an example where you would want to use that button. This select data button, what this does is it, in essence, shows you the data that this graph is going off of. Again, this is a pretty simple graph, so it's not, there's not much that you would need to do with this for this graph. Change chart type can sometimes be handy if you pick a chart type and decide that it might not be the best way to handle your data. You can click this and then um, go to different chart types that, that may fit better for you. And then this final button right here is move chart. This will allow you to take a chart that you've already created and move it to a different tab. We only have one tab in this spreadsheet, so it doesn't show you many options, but you could also put it in a new sheet so that it's all by itself as well. And that's what that would look like. Personally, I prefer to have my charts in the worksheet with the data. I don't really find charts on their own tab to be super helpful, but depending on your preferences, that might be something that you would want.